Hey, it's Tinla from DIY and welcome to my channel. So want to see how I convert my uh, ThinkStation D30 into a home lab server with a dual Xeon E5 2667 V2 processors operated at 3.3 gigahertz. So let's watch this video until the end. You might learn something new here. All right, let's talk some spec about this ThinkStation D30. It has a NVIDIA Quattro 2000 uh, graphic card, which I think is rated at 62 watts at maximum power. Because it doesn't have an additional power line to this card. So the maximum power PCI Express line is 75 watts. So, so it's under 75 watts for sure of this card. The PSU is 80 plus power supply, which is rated maximum at roughly about 1100 watts. I don't plan to use any powerful graphic card for this system. So this original PSU is more than enough for my home lab usage. Um, note that it is not a standard ATX power supply since it's a little bit wider than ordinary power supply. First, I remove all the components uh, attached to the motherboard, but left the CPU and RAM sticks intact. I purchased a couple of Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drive for the storage, which I will be using True NAS operating system in a virtual machine setting to manage my storage pools. I don't want to use the Western Digital Red drives uh, for NAS because some of them using SMR technology, which is not good for NAS storage. I also purchased additional LSI SAS 9207 HBA card, which is a hard disk controller card for more storage uh, capacities. The onboard Intel hard disk controller is good, but only limited to SATA 3 gigahertz per second speed. Uh, since the motherboard sits in a bigger case, and which has more airflow, I think, I need a longer A-pin EPS power supply extension cable. Then I try to fit the motherboard into the case, and the case itself would accommodate this huge non-standard EATX form factor motherboard, uh, which has a dimension of 12 by 14 inches. Um, there's no issue fitting the motherboard into this case, but so some of the holes are not lined up. Um, so in a total of 10 screw hole uh, mounting point for this motherboard, only six were perfect match. So I had to drill and tap uh, two holes and make a customized mounting bracket for the other two holes. Uh, so I loaded up with the number two center drill and marked the, my spot on the case and then I switched to number 40 drill bit to make a hole. After I finished making a hole, I make sure I get all the shaving out because it can short circuit the uh, motherboard if you leave it in there. And the problem with the other last two is that these two holes has a cutout at the back so I cannot drill so I have to make a mounting bracket for these two uh, mounting location so I measure the distance between the motherboard hole and the case hole approximately So here you can see the uh, the distance. So I, I quickly sketch on the piece of paper uh, what I want to make with all the dimensions. Um, and I get on to my computer to make a 3D model uh, that I can actually send it to 3D printer to print it out, a brackets for those uh, mounting locations. The standoff is actually 6.5 millimeters height. So I make sure that I got 
the same height as the mounting bracket. As you can see, the boss um, for that standoff is 6.5, and I export it to SDL5 where my printer can accept the 3D model. So I send the file and printed out the mounting bracket for my uh, uh, mounting locations. I'm gonna take a while uh, to get this uh, printed, um, probably about 30 minutes or so. Um, in case you don't know, I designed and made this 3D printer six years ago um, using SolidWorks. Um, I put a link to this uh, 3D printer that I make uh, on the top right corner. You can click on it to 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 v to see the details of it if you are interested in uh, this 3D printer. Also, I want to say something about this 3D printer. I'm going to convert it into a laser cutter and graver. So after about 30 minutes or so, uh, the print finish, I got these mounting bracket so that I can mount it onto the back of the motherboard itself with, with these offset holes, which I'm going to use them to uh, fasten onto the back of the case. So as you can see in this photo, it's um, the offset locations. Um, I use a shorter screw that I can find as possible because I don't want to short circuit at the back of the motherboard itself. Um, it has only about 6.5 millimeter uh, distance between the back plate and the motherboard. And you have to accommodate for those uh, uh, solder joints it's poking out. So it's safe to get two millimeter uh, screw to fasten those offset mount bracket. So I'm successfully mount the motherboard into this uh, crosshair case. I'm very happy with it, the way it turns out. All I gotta do is fasten those uh, location down and it's very sturdy, it doesn't move anywhere. So very happy the way it turns out. And finally, I just put together the hard drive, the power supply, the fan, the cable management, the way how I build PC. It takes a while to, to get it done, but uh, eventually I got it done. Um, and I started up for the first time and it's functional. It uh, doesn't give me any error. I'm very happy. Uh, it didn't break anything. Uh, for the CPU uh, extension cable, I want to keep them as short as possible because uh, the voltage drop from the source to the motherboard is a lot if you have a longer cable. So I use as short as possible. I didn't want to do any cable management at the back of the case because it get really long. This is a huge case. I built a closet for this one. I cut out a door with a vent uh, option. And as you can see, I got a lot of fan moving air around. Three fans on top, just sucking all the air up, uh, blow it out. Um, and I turned my tower uh, inside out, basically blowing the air out of the closet instead of the other way around where I can easily access the hard drive. But uh, heat is more important. So I have a configuration like this. You can see another Dell as my PFSEN uh, router. The hardware is done. Now I am gonna put up the software. I have it installed the VMware Hypervisor EXXI7 onto this uh, server that I can virtualize a lot of operating system, including Windows Server to host my uh, media server. Um, as you can see here, I use Plex as well. A lot of people use Plex. <laughs> and um, uh, that's it. I also installed TrueNAS uh, for my operating system to manage uh, the storage pool where a lot of 
resources access to that storage pool, like Plex Media Server. As you can see, I have a PFSAN running with a lot of like blockage from PFSAN blocker NG. I also install a logging server. As you can see, that's the top block IP address to access my network. I can generally see uh, how many times uh, from any country to access my network uh, and got blocked out by PF block NG. And that's it. This is how I turn my ThinkStation D30 into a home lab system where I can actually study and experience a lot of other things. Actually, all these logging dashboard here that I just learned a couple of weeks ago. And if you'd like me to share some information, I'll be happy to do it. Just please comment down below. And thanks for watching and see you next video. Bye.